you see a lot of girls who are well behaved, they're at home, but then you have the boys out here in the streets, smoking weed, having girlfriends. So again, we're talking about honor, but we are maybe as men blameworthy sometimes that our daughters are going and falling into haram because we've made the halal haram. Would you say men and women are different? Absolutely, yeah. Don't you think that it should be applied differently if we are different? Of course we should advise our daughters, etc. But are we doing anything for our sons? I genuinely believe, I don't think we're doing anything. Right, so for instance, you see sometimes some mothers or fathers walking out with their children and the daughter is covered from head to toe in abaya and, you know, and hijab and the boy is wearing shorts and he's wearing vest. Ali said the emphasis has to be the same because the punishment is the same. In the grave, it's no different. And I I think that the root of the problem is, is not the, the red pill or the gender or, or the education, is our lack of Islamic knowledge. Red pill is full of degenerate men. Yeah. They dishonor women. They are not masculine men. I don't think this is just you. I don't think it's just me. I'm the only one. And no, you're doing that, brother. Just know there's somebody else probably doing that to your future wife. And when the day comes and you're marrying and you're like, why did that happen? Because she came across a man like you. So in Islam, Modesty is not just looks. Modesty is your tongue, the yep. way you speak, your heart, the way you act, your character. So it's an umbrella. Mm -hmm. It's not just beauty. I genuinely believe that men and women should be taught slightly different things as they're growing up to, to conquer different battles that they're gonna face in life. And, 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 also, and also, you know what I find really funny about the red pill? They're very funny. They complain about, yeah, women with their body counts, body counts. And they are the ones who are causing the body counts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. It's Nonsense. so dumb. What are you thinking about, yeah? Islamnet is raising funds to establish a masjid and community center in Norway and they urgently need your support. This donation will be a sadaqah jariya for you because every person that comes a step closer to Allah through your donation, you will inshallah be reaping the reward. Click the link and donate what you can. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh brothers and sisters and dear friends. Hope you guys are well inshallah. Welcome to another episode of the Bitter Truth Show inshallah. Uh, we took a bit of a break alhamdulillah. Uh, but yeah, today's topic is actually something that I am very, very passionate about and I'm sure many of the speakers, uh, the guests here as well, are. Um, before I start, I want to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, the most just, all praises, glory and gratitude belong to him. Uh, I want to thank every single um, honorable guest that's here today, uh, from the brothers and the sister side, inshallah. And I'm not going to waste any time, I'm going to get straight into it. You guys know the rules, if you don't know the rules, bitter buzzer. Uh, if you disagree with the sister, the sisters disagree with the sisters, or vice versa, press the buzzer, you have one and a half minutes where nobody can interrupt. You have your say, you can only press it once, inshallah. Um, and just simple rules, uh, less abstain from backbiting, slandering, foul talk, we don't need to do that anyways, uh, we know that. Uh, and that's it. So today's topic in a nutshell is, um, why is there a greater emphasis when it comes to modesty, expectations, um, or just like a spe specific way of life when it comes to sisters? So for example, you have households where, and I've seen this, I've come, I come from Jahiliya, I come from, you know, not being a Muslim. I see it in my family as well. Where now this, the, the tide has kind of shifted a bit, where the man, the, the boy, is, he's, he's, he's fine. He can go have a girlfriend. He can go mess around. He can go clubbing. He can, and he can do whatever he likes. But when it comes to the girl, it's no. And this can be cultural, but does this have any place in Islam? So the discussion at hand is, why is there a greater emphasis on sisters as if like Islam was only sent down to how a sister should be modest. Is modesty just for a, a, a woman? So just, maybe I'll start with Sister Amira, inshallah. So Sister Amira, what's your take on it? Have you ever come across this? Um, and why do we have this? Because as Muslims, this is not Islam. Um, yeah, so for me, the way I see it is, we have like a culture in, in the UK or the West where we've normalized certain practices. And I think with the red pill ideology, you have a lot of, again, emphasis on, you know, women are the cause of the downfall of, of men and boys and women are the reason why, um, you know, things are not going very well in, in the household or, you know, they are the cause of divorces and, you know, they, they may be initiating it. But for me, the way I see it is these men and these boys 
have not been trained enough because like you said, the emphasis is always on the girls, the girls, the girls, and never so much on the boys. The boys are getting away with murder. They're getting away with God knows what, you know? You, you see a lot of girls who are well behaved, they're at home, you know, they're not as bad as people make out, but then you have the boys out here in the streets, smoking weed, having girlfriends, uh, you know, just running riot, not listening to their parents. But there's not been enough, like actually what is going on here? Boys are really getting away with a lot out here to be honest with you. Mm. And for me, the way I see it, a kingdom and a nations are led by men. So if a kingdom and a nation falls, you can't now put the blame on women. You have to put the blame on the men who are supposed to lead us, who are supposed to, you know, bring that nation up. It's not the fault of women. Women, okay, we, we do have to do our part. We have to be, uh, you know, modest and we have to try as well. But this deen is a nasiha to us all. It's not just for women. Okay. Where do you guys think this is like stemming from? Like, I want to know, like, to me, I think like, for example, one of the reasons that like, I was reading some tafsir, one of the reasons that the Quraysh, the, the pagan Arabs used to bury their daughters alive, uh, there was a couple of reasons. Number, one of the reasons was because they um, said, okay, you know, they can't provide for them. Yeah. Uh, not, another reason was, is this uh, phenomenon, which is basically that if they go to war, their female relatives will be taken off captives and um, you guys get the gist. Yeah. So they felt that as this is disgraceful to us. So therefore it's, it's, I think this is where it stems from, because if you look at it, we talk about this issue, yeah? Um, and we've mentioned this before. Zina is zina for a man or a woman. Adultery is adultery for a man or a woman. The punishment in the hereafter is the same. However, which I do agree that there are, co the consequences are different. Uh, for example, and I'm just mentioning these examples without being too crude, is that if you get into a fight in school, like with God's school, yeah? You, usually, if you're having a fight with another man, what is the first thing that he, he could say to you to make your blood boil? Your mom. Answer to your mom. Yeah. Okay, good. This is very interesting because we really need to understand this in deeper, yeah? They go straight for your mom, your sister, your daughter. Why? Embarrassing. Good. So this is what I mean by, in general, in our day-to-day -day lives, this is a reality. <clears throat> Why? Because it stems to, again, and I talk about these issues, and this is one of the reasons I started the Bitter Truth show, is so our sisters can understand and also we can understand as well, is that the act of intimacy, um, just so we understand clearly, inshallah, because it, it's been done too, forgive me, because of that, it's, they see it as something degrading. Now, I understand that, but again, again, I really don't want to make this show about it's the sisters because I'm really passionate about this in the sense where, and I was on a recent podcast with one sister and I don't blame her. Like, you know, I understand where she was coming from, but she gave a bit of emphasis on like, you know, we need to make sure our um, daughters, are, and I was like, why? Why our daughters? Why can't we fix our sons? I do generally, uh, I grew up in the Get the I do uh, agree partially with both of you, but I would like to emphasize about okay. what you, you began to say about uh, zina is uh, the same for male and females and I think the root of the problem is the lack of Islamic knowledge and is it's more uh, than, than a gender problem it's a, so uh, a social problem that you can find in uh, many societies Mediterranean, Mediterranean uh, oriental societies and uh, uh, Islam came to get rid of those preconception who are which are false it's in our innate nature i agree with you that uh, uh it's something the most trigger uh, for uh, um, insult or uh, offense you can do to someone to go for his uh, female of his household but uh our legislation is what allah sent and the the rule is the same when allah said to the, the believing man to lower the, the gaze he said it uh, also for the, the believing women. And uh, we have the, ten the tendency to, to forget that uh, the, 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 the aura of the, the males are from the, the umbilic to the, to the knees and the brother uh, like to show off. They go to the gym, they, they get bulked and uh, 
uh, they uh, forgot that uh, it, that was the topic at the first place. That uh, modesty, modesty, is uh, something who uh, which is uh, uh, mandatory for them as well, as well. But I agree that socially, the, the you can bring more fitna if uh, because uh, for basic reason biology for the the the, the, the bodies of the. The opposite gender is not that uh, uh, making that. Uh, um, sorry, excuse my English is not my first normal second language, but um, I do agree with you. But I, I just wanted to emphasize that the, the deep uh, uh, root of the problem was the lack of Islamic knowledge. Allah mm -hmm. Alam. No, that was a good point. Yeah, that was a really good point. I just want to add to that. Um, just to kind of go back to the Jahiliya time um, and also. Uh, post-Islam time. Um, when we think about the social construct and the definition of the meaning of honour, that that made changes through different times. So in the times of Jahiliya, the woman was seen as inferior. So the idea was this inferior being is therefore an embarrassment. So can't do whatever it was the men were doing at the time. So based off that, that that's kind of how it started where you know, it's an embarrassment to have uh, these, you know, humans around. In the time of Islam, when Islam came, Islam came with honor for women. So that real uh, definition, that's where it, that's when it started. So the, the sense of honor on women is when Islam arrived. Now, over the course of time, course of history, um, Islam in its purest form, obviously, has mixed with culture. So where you've had different cultures within the Ummah, with all their own ideas, trying to adapt to Islam, some perhaps more, you know, and this is one's opinion, some more successfully than others in terms of separating Islam culture. The women under different uh, cultures, the definition of honor has been placed on women through using Islam, but at the same time, uh, Defy, defying Islam by actually only putting the honor on women. Like we've already established honor comes from men and women we all we all have to be modest we all have to you know we all have the same rules there's not one rule for men and one rule for women with regards to modesty and that entails uh, behavior or dress like brother just mentioned etc so I think it's just there's been too much emphasis placed on women modesty and I think that is also stemmed from the fact that the biggest difference in modesty between men and women is a hijab the physically mm -hmm. So that's kind of where the starting point is because it's something that we can see and it's something that's obvious. Mm -hmm. Honor is applied. Sorry, brother. Honor is applied differently to, to men and women. Um, mm. I'd say for women, honor is applied to their looks because it's it, it comes down to beauty. Um, so the original question, the original topic is modesty. Why is it applied more to women? It's simply because honor and modesty is something that women should prosper to do more because it's what we look at. Whereas for men, we're not as, for lack of better words, we're not as beautiful. So if I was to walk out into the street and I see a bunch of people and I look over to them and I think they're nice, I might not believe, I might not say so because, um, I beg your pardon. I beg oh, your pardon. Sorry, I was going to say, no, no, it's, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> it's okay. I, sometimes I have an issue when I speak and I can't, no, no. I'll calm down my heart. No, 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 that's, that's what that's what that's what that's what I'm saying. I, you know, I used to get that. You know what I would say is, um, do you do it at car? You know, um, money even at car. I'll give it to you. Basically, do it because the thing is, I used to get that. Actually, I can remember in I was I went to one uh, university talk. I literally I I, I was in the talk. There was a university off topic. I literally froze. Exactly what it went for. Wallahi, my mind went blank, and I was just I, I didn't know what to say. Like it's, 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 it's happened to me. You know what I realized? It's um, adhkar. Like, make sure you do your morning, even adhkar bowl. Um, and it's very important. So it happens, it's normal, but don't, like, you know, you know if you, let me know when you yeah. finish, Shala. Yeah. Do, do you know what it is? Do you know yeah. what it is? Mm. From when I was younger, from when I was in school, mm. and I would speak out into, like, the class and whatnot, like, presentations, because yeah, yeah, yeah. you were forced. Yeah. You were forced to do it. Mm, yeah. So you've got a negative connotation yes. of talking. Mm. The, last, like, the last two times I was on the show, yes. the, the last two, two episodes I'd done, I was fine. Yes. Mm. But I think, I think it's because sometimes you feel yeah, the lights yeah, on yeah, you and that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, but it's, it's totally normal, bro. My point, the point, yeah. <laughs> I really want to get my point, yeah. my point across. Modesty is applied differently to men and women. That's, the, I, think, I believe that is the answer. Um, 
for, for women, it's looks. And I think if I'm talking about honor with men, mm. it's to do more with how you handle your business, more to do with handle your, yourself with other men, mm. whether it's physicality, uh, financially, mm. that's how honor is determined with men. Mm. Whereas with women, it's more of their looks. It's beauty. Okay, can I just, can I make a okay, point on that? Point. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. So in Islam, modesty, hijab, mm. is not just looks. Modesty is your tongue, the yep. way you speak, your heart the way you act, your character. So it's an umbrella. Mm -hmm. It's not just beauty mm -hmm. because a lot of women, you know, you would say some women are, are beautiful, yes. But a lot of women are average. Like we're just human beings, you know? Not, not, not to our sister Amira. When it comes to, when it comes to, no, no, just, just, to the, 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 just I want to cut you because it's very important because this is where the, the, the misunderstanding happens. We don't think like you do. It's very important no, for no, us I to understand. understand. Yeah, just, just, just so you know, for yeah. a brother, like I was speaking to a Saudi sister and I was saying, look, there's some brothers who get excited over ankle and she started laughing. Yeah, and and, and, and there was brothers in the crowd, they were like, sure. yeah. And she was shocked. She was like, really? I was like, yes. The, the, no, this is how we are created. Yeah, and it, the, the thing is, that's why women like to be seen and ma men like to see. That's what we're taught to lower our gaze and women are taught to cover up. We should also cover up as well. And they are taught to lower their gaze as well. But in the priorities, just, just because of that, you need to understand, you might think it's just average. Trust me, a average woman could get multiple DMs, left, right, center. And this is seen in like, uh, they do studies, yeah? Uh, women get hundreds of messages. You go to a brother who's uh, average and ask him if he's got one message in his life. Look, so, but no, carry on, the, carry on, the yeah. Point but is, your point is about modesty is 100% true. Is modesty is an umbrella term. Yes. It's not just about the beauty, it's about the character. That's why um, when you say honor is applied to women differently, it shouldn't be placed on women differently. Like um, the sister said here, you know, of course, the hijab is something physical that people can see because women can, Muslim women can identify as being Muslim by wearing the hijab. However, that emphasis and that, uh, you know, that, that emphasis on modesty should be placed equally onto men as it is placed onto us as women, because even though we we may apply and you know wear the hijab you you hear it all the time some women wear hijab but actually they're they're the biggest backbiters or they do this so hijab has to be taken care of on all aspects not just the physical because that's where you have some people who are called hypocrites you know and we have a lot of men unfortunately who are hypocrites because they take care of one thing but they neglect all the other things that they're supposed to be taken care of and i do think as the ummah i'm sorry in this day and age we're getting weaker and weaker not not the ummah itself but the men are getting weaker and weaker they're no longer as strong or disciplined as they're supposed to be you have boys vaping left right and center they buy more vapes than they do sadaqa or zakat that is wrong can i make a point in between we hop to another subject because uh, the, the the point the, the sister and the brother made um was uh, maybe the root of the problem we hopped from honor to modesty and uh, just before we, we talk about shame and uh, maybe the, the problem is semantic. What is honor? What is uh, uh, modesty? Can you define it? Because uh, I can, uh, the, this topic reminds me um, an advice that a Palestinian brother uh, t told me to, to raise my children. He said, one advice I will give you, my brother, is never say this is shameful, this is not wrong, this is not honorable. Say this is halal, this is haram. Raise your ch children like that because I grew up in Palestine, I came here and uh, I traveled to Germany. And in every society, what is shameful could be normal and could be illegal to, to another. And we have our legislation, which, is the, which are the, the Quran and the Sunnah. And maybe we, we should focus on modesty itself as Allah uh, um, um, decreed, it, decreed it. And honor and shame maybe should be left yeah we aside. have our own objective principles and morality yeah would you say we're different would you say men and women are different absolutely yeah so don't you believe that not don't you believe don't you think that it should be applied differently if we are different or do you think it should be the same applied the same well it, it is the same in islam it's the same Modesty has to be the same. It has to be applied the same. Again, yeah. it's only different for a woman 
when it comes to the physical appearance where we have to be more modest in that aspect. But men also neglect, like the brother said, that that modesty you see a lot of muslim men showing that umbilical their belly button all the way to their knees or whatever the case may be that's a, a modesty that is neglected yeah. now it should be applied the same and equally the emphasis i'm talking about the emphasis because that's what ali said the emphasis has to be the same because the punishment is the same in the grave it's no different that is, you know, it, you may feel differently because you're a man, which is fine. And the way you honor your sister or honor your mother or the way you want her to be out here in the streets might be different. Of, of course, you have more of that ghayra, that jealousy over your, your wife. But when you have two kids, a boy and a girl, you have to treat them the same and mm -hmm. raise them equally so they both have the same principles and morality when they leave your home and go out and conduct themselves out in the in the public yeah i disagree with yeah. that mm -hmm. because i think we don't live i mean i agree with what you've all said but we don't live in a perfect world and as much as we want it to be balanced i don't see it ever being balanced so to make sure moving forward, if you do have daughters, to protect them, you do have to focus on them a little bit more in a way of, right, you've got to protect yourself because she could become an, a strong, independent woman. There's no doubt in that. But once she's out there, she is vulnerable. There's, and we can't ignore that. We can't overlook that because we can't say, well, you raise them equally, therefore they can be fine once they're out there because men, unfortunately, are going to have these struggles. And I think if we don't protect our daughters in a way where we emphasise protection, whether it's modesty, honor, you know, whatever it may be, um, they're more likely to suffer the consequences once they are out there. And I think the way that we're going right now, we're, we're heading to a, a, an environment, a, a place and world where women are hyper independent, where they will go, they will travel abroad, they will, you know, live by themselves. They are still vulnerable. And I think that's, as a parent myself, I would I wouldn't raise them the same. I, I wouldn't. Yeah, can I, I would raise, say? emphasize on my daughter a lot more than I would on my son. But when I say emphasize, I'm mm. not going to say, right, son, it's okay for you to be out till 10. Daughter, mm. no, home at nine. Don't even think about it. Mm. Not like that. In a way where the way that I, I, I tailor the upbringing to her is going to be very different. And it's going to be very different for the son. I'm still emphasizing on both, mm. but I'm, I'm using very different strategies to help them sort of, you know, be out there as safe and sound. So if I understood this correctly, I think what you're saying is very valid in the sense where, agree and disagree in the sense where, well, actually not agree, because you're saying the reality is that, of course, there should be higher for both. And we do acknowledge what you said, Michael, which is that, of course, they're different as well. But you're saying that because, I mean, realistically, we would want it to be where that's the case. But because we, we live in an environment where in the West, and in the West, it's we know how it is, sadly. So you're saying because of the threats out there, I have to emphasize on my daughters more. Yes. Not because, because you know Islam says basically, modesty is modesty, do you get it? Mm -hmm. We need to understand that when it comes to aura, a man showing his knee, even if it's this much, yeah? This is what we need to understand when it comes to our religion. It's very profound. And sorry to give these examples, but if a man is showing, arguing that that's his aura here, Whatever you define as aura, just because this is not like arguing, say it's not a fitna for a sister, irrelevant. That's an aura. An aura is an aura. It doesn't matter it's if, if a woman is you know, dressed up in that manner. So I think you're seeing because the threat is greater for the sisters, that's why this emphasis is true. But let's come back to a point, and I'm going to go to the sister, inshallah, is again, I believe genuinely, yeah, we should, of course we should advise our daughters, etc. But are we doing anything for our sons? I genuinely believe, I don't think we're doing anything. Like, I feel like, I might be wrong, who, like, do we get Muslim fathers sitting down and saying, listen, if you come across a woman, she doesn't respect herself, you respect her, or, I don't see it. That's my point of this discussion. I don't see the great emphasis. I know every single sister has definitely been sat in front of her brother or her father and been like, listen, you're not going out of the house like that. Da -da -da. But is that happening to our sons? No. no. Sister. Yeah, I think uh, to piggyback on that, everything stems from childhood, right? So in the manner that we raise our boys in comparison to the way that we raise our girls, right? So for those of us that were raised in households where we had brothers, 
we know that we were taught the importance of wearing a hijab in comparison to our brothers, they weren't taught that that same emphasis wasn't put on them, right? So for instance, you see sometimes some mothers or fathers walking out with their children and the daughter is covered from head to toe in abaya and, you know, and hijab and the boy is wearing shorts and he's wearing vest and he's, you know, he's, he's doing, he's wearing wherever he wants to wear, you know? And that is not uh, in accordance to the teachings and the laws of Islam, we know that, right? So, and like the brother said earlier, different cultures define honor differently, right? But one thing we can all agree with is that honor, you know, majority of the times is placed on the woman. So the honor of the family, uh, you know, most of the times is dependent or contingent upon the way that the woman acts, right? So the way that the woman is. So if the woman is dishonorable, say for instance, she does things that may dishonor herself, now instantly, um, you know, this family is deemed to be a dishonorable family. She's tarnished the reputation of the family. This is why honor killings exist, right? If the woman does something that, you know, displeases her father or the male relatives in her family, they, you know, they, they resort to, unfortunately, taking her life, right? So this is something that exists. So everything stems from childhood. This notion of boys will be boys, men will be men, let him do, you know, what he please. Like, I remember growing up being raised with this idea that a man has no shame, you know? A man, he can do as he pleases. Ultimately, the shame will fall on his female relatives, right? Um, whereas a woman, right, it's entirely different. You know, she doesn't have, um, that same level of grace isn't given to her. Right. So even say, for instance, the woman is a good sister, you know, she's uh, she's practicing Islam, but she's not wearing hijab. She's instantly deemed to be dishonorable. Whereas the brother, he could be a drug dealer, he could be whatever, he could be incarcerated. But that same level of, you know, the emphasis of, you know, he's a dishonorable person with this and that is not placed upon the sister, the him, the brother, unfortunately. Can I can I just add to that? Because you talk um, just off back what you just said. Um, I think to be frank and if we're honest, the honor on the, what, the reason why we've put the responsibility of honour on the female is to do with virginity. And that's kind of where it started. Mm -hmm. And no one questions males mm -hmm. with regards to that, you know, aspect of things. And that's not a topic of discussion when sisters come to get married. I mean, I'm talking about certain cultures or back in the day, it doesn't happen in every culture, but that's actually where it started from. So someone that was never married was expected, obviously, as per Islam anyway, to, you know, be a virgin. If you were divorced, that obviously we all know that that wouldn't be the case necessarily. So the honor starts off from there. So there's a price and the price was put on that. So, you know, I, you know, someone would come want to marry someone's daughter. I have three daughters who have all been, who are all unmarried. So you have, you know, those girls are carrying the honor of the family on that basis of, of, you know, them being moral or immoral and it's to do with that and sister amira mentioned um earlier about red pill and that's why red pill goes on about you know body counts and and you know women in, and you know whatever they're doing and that kind of value and that is where it stems from um also not to conflate in my opinion honor with modesty because you can have uh someone that appears to be modest, like Sister Mira said, that's really dishonorable and vice versa. Um, also, I do agree with Sister Ira to an extent in the sense where you, we've got to equip our children with different skill sets, skill sets based on their gender to survive in society. Um, the risks are different for girls than they are for boys. Um, yes, sometimes modest dress or immodest dress can be a form of creating risk for yourself or immodest dress in a sense, but I don't entirely agree with that mm -hmm. because there are hijabi sisters that have been attacked. Most recently, there was a case of a hijabi sister not long ago, a few weeks ago, that was, you know, attacked um, by a male um, in London and, you know, no. How do you kind of define Sorry, that? I wasn't talking about dress sense. Oh, okay. Apologies, it was yeah. how we raise them mentally. To survive. Not necessarily to survive. But I guess, yeah, to survive. That's yeah. what we're trying to do on this earth anyways. But it's more like when you go out there, yeah. how to protect yourself, how to okay. be cautious, yeah. you know, and like red flags and, mm. you know, because they are vulnerable. Nobody can overlook that. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I, th I think a culture plays a big role in this. I think once again, culture is the issue because... It's like, as you said, like uh, honor killings that happens even in my culture that happens regardless of where it is in the world. But I think um, 
naturally, because a woman has more to lose, um, and you know, a small little rumor could destroy her yeah. entire future. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Why Re- mothers, especially, focus more on why right, you know you can't go out, and it's like they imprison them almost. Mm. And when it comes to the son. Mothers are more lenient than the fathers are, which is shocking. Can I just say, sorry, sorry, let me just say something. In regards to women, we are really brought up as these weak, fragile Mm. things, like damsel in distress. I'll be honest, I was raised quite tough. My, My dad never allowed me to be a victim in this world. He obviously taught me that, you know, you have to be strong, be aware, don't walk down the alleyway. You've got to be street smart as well at the same time. But when it comes to the to the thing of raising your kids, if I'm raising my, if I had a son, if Allah blessed me with my, a son, I'm raising that son, my daughter just as tough as I'm raising my, my son. Because at the end of the day, they're not gonna. They're not gonna uh, go out in the world with two separate. No, it is the same thing. Morals, principles, character builds a human being. So if you're if you're disciplined and you teach your kids to be disciplined in China, do you think they're teaching the girls and boys to be completely different? They're they're raising soldiers in China right now. Whilst here, where where literally we don't know if this one's a man or or a woman, or we don't know what <laughs> we're we're too weak. we're not disciplined and then you have this red pill um, ideology and a lot of our Muslim brothers and younger youth who are following this uh, red pill ideology yeah they're following uh, degeneracy with the red pill ideology they're completely degenerate holding myself for for too long because I wanted to make a a good comment oh is it from someone else is it someone someone you disagree with no no I I disagree with the the, the hopping from subject to another okay good I think that the root yeah. of the problem, as I said, and the sister uh, gave a, a, um, a, a very good um, explanation about uh, honor killing. You d- described jahiliya straight up. And uh, Islam came exactly for, to, to, to fight all, all this nonsense. Yeah. And I think that the root of the problem is, is not the, the red pill or the gender uh, or the education, is our lack of Islamic knowledge. Yeah. If we want something else, go get another religion. Our religion is Islam, our uh, legislation is Quran and Sunnah. And if, if you want to understand why we don't have the, the, the same uh, balance uh, in our education of the youth when uh, regarding to the, the, the modest, modesty, it's because we didn't understand our deen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's yeah. in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry for, for interrupting. Yeah, I just wanted to agree with the sister on the end about um, letting boys be boys and men be men. If you let boys be boys, a lot of the time they just revert to how they feel, like like you're more animalistic, like the reptile side of your brain. If you just let oh, just boys be boys, they just do however they feel then. And so, especially in our like, especially in my culture, like growing up in growing up in England, like because religion's kind of been forgotten here, it's more so just you can just go on based on how you feel. And that goes for girls as well. I mean, that is very evident. If, if you look at society, if you look at social media, that's why I find Islam so important and that's why I picked Islam. Because I'm personally not a tolerant person. And I feel like if you if you stand for if you stand for not that if what is it? If you stand for nothing, you you fall for there you go, there you go. So that's why I was that's why I was learning better and I just thought I actually believe I believe this. And so I went to the mosque in Brixton and I, I reverted and I became Muslim. And I think if everyone, I think anyone needs to read the Quran and think they only need to read it and they'll know the right way to live. Yeah. And that goes for man or woman. And I think after listening to the sisters, you're definitely right when it comes to, when it comes to modesty on both. When it comes to covering yourself, it, both. The only thing I would disagree with, though, is the, the problems both men and women are going to face. Um, I, can't talk, I can't talk on what women are going to face. I'm not a woman. Um, but for men, I can definitely say that there are things that men will face that women want and women will face that men want. And I mm. think it's, I genuinely, and I think we can argue back and forth on this all day, yeah. that I genuinely believe that men and women should be taught slightly different things as they're growing up to, to, um, to conquer different battles that they're going to face in life. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's it. I agree. That's yeah. it. I will also add that yeah. it's not just about covering yourself. It's how do you, you, be, you behave. How you walk, yeah, how you... Like, so that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they don't. They, modesty is brought down to um, just your clothing. 
Um, and you know, that's not just it. But a few uh, things like, for example, when it comes to honor killing, this is totally against Islam. Mm -hmm. This concept of honor killing, like, well, like, it's, it's, it's actually, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like the fact that people <laughs> ascribe this to the Islam, you know, Islam is totally against it, man. <laughs> there is, there is, there is nothing like this concept of uh, if your daughter goes and gets a boyfriend or uh, argument, you found that she committed zina, that you kill her. There's no text in Islam. Even worse. Anywhere. Even worse. Like, no, it's, it's, it's this one says culture. Marry yeah. A certain yeah. person yes. from this tribe or whatever. Yeah. That some parents get so angry they yeah. end up killing their child. Yes. Yeah, that happened and this, years yeah. ago, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Yeah. There was there was a, there was a Kurdish uh, girl. Yeah. yeah. She literally they they cut a body up and put it into like literally. And this was because she was getting to know someone or something along those mm. lines. And people connect this to Islam. It's got nothing to do with Islam. Nowhere in the Islam, the Quran, the Sunnah tells you that. And not only that, it tells you the opposite. That if this happens, you need to hide it. There is some narration that goes to Omar ibn Khattab where an old man came and said, oh, my daughter committed zina. And he said, shh. He's like, he said, he's like, shall I go and tell the... He said, no. Why the hell would you do that? He's like, to hide it. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? In Islam, it's, it's, it, you should hide it. And uh, forget that, bro. Like, for example, the responsibility is, like, of course, I believe the uh, intimacy, the gatekeepers of intimacy are women. I believe that. That's 100% the case. But, that the point yes, that, 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 that is the case. And that's why, for example, when it comes to this issue, one of the seven major sins in the hadith of the Prophet <laughs> is the one who slanders a chaste woman. Yeah, it's, 100, it's 180 lashes, 80 lashes. Yeah, unless you go to the woman that you slandered and she forgives you. But it's 80 lashes and your testimony from that day on is rejected. Why? Because the honor of a woman is so held Sick. in esteem yeah. in Islam. That's, that's and, good, and, right. and yeah, so that's why it gives that emphasis. So can we understand maybe from this hadith, that there is that responsibility. Is it stemming from that? I don't know. I, because I don't think, yes, that shows the responsibility is there, but it doesn't mean necessarily that you should emphasize on that because I think we should educate our young men. And I've mentioned this story, like, this story before, and I'll mention it again, and, I, and I'll be mentioning in my marriage documentary as well, uh, and I go into detail about this because when I first came to Islam, like, I lived in Jahili, a club being party, all this kind of nonsense, yeah? And I repented and I came, alhamdulillah, and to me, it's like when I came, like I, I just said, oh Allah, I'm never ever touching a woman in a haram way ever again. Like just the, the whole thing, just I was like, khalas. And to my amazement, like to me, I was like, when I came to Islam and I saw sisters in hijab, I was like, wow, I would want to have a wife like that one day. You know, but I would, I didn't have any Muslim uh, friends. I didn't know. So I was on these, uh, they, uh, these websites, you know, these Muslim, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'll give her insight actually. Mm -hmm. Actually, we actually go undercover on some of them in the documentary, we'll find that later. Uh, no, actually we do, we actually go full out, uh, undercover on them and expose, what, is this dating or is this, what the hell is this? So I would go in there and I would meet sisters for marriage and base, bear in mind I was a new Muslim, I didn't know better. I didn't know this whole wali thing. I was just thinking, you know what? My intentions are this, and wallahi, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, bro, the things that I saw, I was shocked, but my chin dropped like on the floor. Like it was unbelievable what they were calling to. It was unbelievable the way they were operating. And I, I don't want to get into details, but to me, as a Muslim man, I had to know better, bro. I couldn't be like, oh, she's moving like this. So in Jahiliya, that's how brothers move. Do you get it? She's moving like that? Yeah, but you treat her like that. Okay, I, just, I don't follow this Jahiliya anymore. I follow Islam. And Islam, it tells me, I do not care if she's there telling me outright, let's go and do this. The hell with you, man. Get the hell away from me. You're the you, you, yeah. If you're moving like that, salam alaikum. I, I got nothing to do with that. I'm not gonna say, oh Allah, yeah, we fell into zina. Well, but it was her fault. Yeah. No, man, you done it. Both of you did it. So I have to know better. So do we train? Do we educate our sons? Like I don't have sons. I got three daughters. Alhamdulillah. Yeah? And to me, if I had a son, I would have to, like, for example, I would have to show my son a the hardship of life because he's got a lot of responsibilities on his shoulder. So, you know, I, I would say that, and I speak to my wife sometimes, and I go, yeah, when he's two years old, I'm gonna stop jabbing his uh, ribs. <laughs> and, she, and she's like, I'm gonna call NSPCC on you, yeah? And I'm, and I'm like, <laughs> is, it, is it RSPC? I'm like, it's NSPCC. I got confused, that's, that's animals. <laughs> but you never know, some identify as a rabbit these days. So the thing is here, is that I'm like, because as a mother, she doesn't understand, but to me, it's like, I'm trying to bring him to the world where these things are gonna happen, do you get it? But I would wanna sit down with my son and say, listen, I know, for, for us, I know the fitna level, yeah? May Allah uh, help the brothers who are single. The yeah, point yeah. here is this, irrelevant to the point, I do not care if the brother is dying, yeah? There is methods in the Quran and the Sunnah that we can use, yeah, get married. But the point is, no, when, I will never ever tell my son like, yeah, you know, you yeah, yeah, get girlfriends. Yeah. What is this? You hear this, bro, wallahi. You hear Muslim fathers well. telling their sons, yeah, yeah, you go, are you link, uh, wallahi, yeah, I'm gonna go see my girlfriend, that's my boy. Once again, once again yeah. the coral problem. Huh? 
Actually, but that's what I'm saying. So I do not know where it's stemming from, but can we talk about how as men and mothers as well, how should we nurture our sons? I really want to know because the people that are watching out there, if you start this at home of, yeah, my son, you go, Aki, what the hell is this? So how do we just move into like solutions? To, to do drugs, it's better for me than, than Zina or I don't know. SubhanAllah, how, me and how can both you pronounce this, this insanity? <laughs> yeah. Both of them are bad, the drugs are fake. Oh, uh, but, and, 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 also, and also, you know what I find really funny about the red pill? They're very funny. They complain about, yeah, women with yeah. their body counts, body counts. And they are the ones who are causing the body counts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. It's so dumb. What you think about it, yeah? It's so dumb. Yeah, you make sure a woman is not untouched. Yeah, it's like, bro, what are you doing? Yeah, see, we're 50 women. Yeah. It's like, bro, are you dumb? Like, you're yeah. literally shooting, you're cutting your. And, and I see this to brothers. If you start moving like that, well, let me tell you something. You see, when you go and try to, and I'm not blaming, I'm not trying to make the sisters totally innocent out of this. Let's be real here. I'm so sorry, yeah? These days, sisters are on another level, bro. I see brothers got more higher, sadly, yeah? Mm -hmm. But the point is this. I'm just saying that in a nutshell, we should like, I just, what happened to one thing? I forgot what I was saying. I forgot, I forgot what I was saying, I was going to red pill. Okay, let me remember. But in a nutshell, the point what I was saying is that how do we nurture our sons? Like for example, for those who are watching this, parents that's watching this, how do we nurture our sons, how they should be towards the opposite gender? And if I remember the point, I'll come back. So firstly, I just want to say in, in regards to sons, um, you can do whatever you want to do to, to teach your children. I think it's important to instill Islamic studies, instill, uh, you know, madrasa, okay. learning Quran, you know, taking them around men who are inspirational, you know, because right now there is a lack of inspiration. And obviously we have the best inspiration, which is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But even the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a Sahaba, good friends. You know, there's, there's a lack of inspiration and good quality people for these young boys to look up to. So they need to be around men. And this is why a lot of Muslim boys are sticking to this red pill ideology. I promise you, Islam teaches you ultimate discipline, control. You can be successful. You can be a masculine man without the red pill. Islam teaches you all of those things. You do not need to go to that red pill. Red pill is full of degenerate men. Yeah. Degenerate men, they are the lowest of the lowest of men. They sit on their computers, they type, they, they insult women, they dishonor women. They are not masculine men. Muslim men who follow the Islam, the Sunnah, the Deen properly, they are masculine men. Bring your and sons shepherds. to Islam, teach them discipline, put them in kickboxing, put them in archery, whatever. Take them into something that's going to teach them ultimate discipline. And Islam is the number one thing to start. That's why I really agree with, with the brother here, because, you know, we have everything in the sunnah. We have everything that en enables us to stay away from societal poisons. Yeah. And for me, I think we've, we're too weak on our sons. We, we are. We're forgetting that it takes a village. The neighbours in Africa and back in the day could slap your son of course. if he's being disrespectful to a woman or doing badness in the street they will slap you until they take you back to your parents and then home. you'll go back to your parents and your parents yeah will slap you. and then yeah. your yeah. parents yeah. will deal and with you as well father, now yeah. nowadays the 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 mom is or the dad is too scared to even say something to their son what's this the where's the discipline you. where's the respect for the parents so I think it comes down to discipline. It comes down to what the foundations, what we're teaching our sons. If you've got a little boy now, it's the time now to start, really. Can I share a bit, excuse me, of my personal experience? Because I uh, was married as a, a, um, at 19 years old. I'm alhamdulillah a father of three. And uh, during my uh, um, journey, and uh, maybe I was uh, my first year of marriage, Somebody, somebody very wise told me a, a very good advice. She told me that uh, if your body is such, she told me in Moroccan, if your body is such a, a cheap merchandise that you can't do zina, so do it. And it resonated me so deep, subhanAllah. 
I all I all I, I, I at, the, at the time uh, hating Zinaba because uh, it was the Shair the wonders of Allah and I, I saw it as uh, something haram, but this particular advice, I don't know why resonate with me. Subhanallah, if you are ready to 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 engage in such filthy something, uh, Allah Subhanahu Azza wa called fisk, something very uh, uh, I, I don't know who's. Uh, um, uh, okay. It's okay. It's, okay. it's very, very filthy. Yeah. And um, engage in those fields and being okay with it, it's the root of the problem as well, I think. Mm. Allah, I'm sorry. Can I just add, just, um, yeah, I agree with what you just said, but also just to continue from Sister Amira. Um, it's also the issue, you know, obviously Islam has taught us everything and everything we need uh, in the dunya, but it's also, we've also got the societal, uh, sorry, the cultural norms and the enabling culture in certain cultures. So, for example, you know, because, you know, someone can have a son and a daughter mm -hmm. or so a son and daughters um, and the son has a different set of rules. So, for example, um, you know, the, the parents or the, you know, the mum won't bat an eyelid over the son having a girlfriend, for example. But with the daughters, that's like something they can't even, you know, entertain in their mind um, because of the culture and the honour aspect of things. Yeah. So it's that enabling culture. Um, and I have seen this in, you know, many Muslim based cultures, but in, especially in my own as well, where it's all right for the boys and people talk about it openly. Oh yeah, my son, he's got this girlfriend. I'm not really happy about, you know, her, she's from whatever, whatever. But, and they just talk about it casually. So there's even casual chat between the mothers. So as mothers and as a mother myself, we have a responsibility to educate our children. And that is actually our position in Islam. That's our, you know, what, what we're supposed to do as mothers is to educate our children and we're supposed to give them the moral co code. But when you've got, you know, other mothers having a casual discussion about their sons having had X amount of girlfriends or bringing around the house, then you kind of, you're just normalizing it. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, when this normalization seeps through, it's going to affect your dean because you're not going to associate it with you're not going to think about the dean you're just thinking about it as gender based so oh it's because he's a man we know what men are like mm -hmm. and therefore it's justifiable because that's a man's nature whereas it's not a woman's nature to you know feel have feelings for a man or be open um you know about someone that she's interested in because you know she she should have more control over herself than him and, well, and I think unbelievable, man. Well, yeah. it's unbelievable. It's like we treat women like they're aliens, <coughs> yeah. like they're these beings where you just program them and go, yeah, what the hell are you talking about? The woman, a woman has every right. Well, like, I would love if my daughter came and said, Baba, I saw this um, brother in uni. Can you come and speak to him? All day, every day. What? Like, what am I going to be like? Huh? Do you have no haya? What kind of nonsense is this, Aki? Well, like, I, I find it so bizarre. And it's a lack of, like you said, Islam. Our deen does not teach this, bro. This is far from Islam. And I talk about this. People have turned Islam as if it's, it's their dad's religion. Like, it has to be this way or that way. Well, like, it's like even the fact that Khadija and her, like, she proposed to the Prophet. Mm -hmm. What are you going to say about that? Yeah, she yeah. has no haya. Yeah, so, what are yeah. you talking about? She Perfect. saw a decent, honorable, the best man to walk this earth. And she did. And sometimes, like, sisters come, like, I'm at the speaker's corner, some of the sisters come for advice. Oh, there's a brother I like, but I'm scared to approach. I'm like, why? Like, yeah, I, I don't understand. What is the problem? I want my daughters to get married. They should be comfortable enough to meet and say, and this is what happens when you make the halal haram, you open the doors of Thank fitna. Literally. In yes, in secrecy, what's better? She goes and does it uh, behind your back? Mm -hmm. Come, no problem. Well, why? Even if it means you got nowhere to stay, I don't care. My concern is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll tell my daughter, you can stay here, he can stay there. No problem, yeah? Facilitating the halal. Imagine in, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you enable that. Even if they're at uni, no problem. If that's the case, he's a good boy. Obviously, um, obviously, man's gonna grill him a bit still, yeah? You have to electrocute him a bit. Give him some, uh, give him some voltages so we know his lungs can open up a bit, yeah? Um, you're gonna do that. After you've done that, it's like, okay, I want to cater for this. I want it to be halal. Do you get it? But most these days, la ilaha illallah, sisters are like, and like feeling as if I've got no one to talk to. And this is the reason why they get taken advantage of as well. So again, we're talking about honor, but we are maybe as men blameworthy sometimes that our daughters are going and falling into haram because we've made the halal haram. 
Exactly. So it's uh, ajib. You want to press extra honor, but you're you're pushing them away like, like the red pill. Yeah, it's uh, ajib. But yeah, guys, we've got a good about 10, 15 minutes. But um, I, it's still, again, as men, can we talk about your? You've got how many kids? You got three kids. Three kids. All, all girls? No, no, one girl and two boys. Okay, how old is he? The my daughter is, is not the, the boy. Uh, the, the oldest is six years old. Okay, mashallah. When would you think like you would have a discussion where you sit him in front of you and be like, you know what? This is. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, when do you think that be? And, as a father, what would you say to fathers that are watching this? How, how should that discussion be? Um, yeah. First and foremost, if you have a good member, remember yourself. We uh, have the interest of something, even if we are not concerned about it, even before puberty. So don't be candid and naive and think that the, uh, today's uh, with uh, stuff like internet, everything is available. So in the, can, I, I won't say the kindergarten, but in middle school or primary school, uh, things happen. So if you don't teach yourself, your children, some important stuff, people, someone else would, and unfortunately most of the time it would be in a very bad way. So I will, inshallah, <laughs> try to talk to him, even to my daughter, or not only let's, to the- Let's speak to son. What, what would you say to your son? Like, let's, let's speak to your son, you son, your son, your okay. son 16 or 15 or whatever. Like the, the, the sister said, I will uh, mainly focus on the, his Islamic education. Quran, yeah. Sunnah, what is halal, what is haram. It would, this will facilitate things. You, 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 I will uh, sit with him and say, you, you know, son, now you're growing up, and now this is gonna, going to happen. But remember, this is haram, this is why, why you don't. But you can do it the halal way. Something that, that big, kills me is that people can um, um, consider haram. We make we met halal mm -hmm. haram. Yes. And uh, I was married at the university. I have made long mm -hmm. studies. I, I have uh, went through medical studies. So mm -hmm. for 10 years, I, I was a student and married. And um, in my, uh, in the uni, I was called the married guy. And- Mashallah. <laughs> now it's totally normal. We're having the marriage documentary season two. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would like to to, to know why, where is the the <laughs> second uh, episode? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, in a nutshell, me, many of my friends come. How do you, how could you do that? And I do what to be married as uh, so, so such uh, such a. There you go. You know. Guess, yeah. Okay. So, sorry. Do you have girlfriends? Say yes. So, how could you do Mind that? Them. And they're only Muslim. Do, do, this, do you see the point? Do you know what they're doing? They're seeing it as weird. Yeah. You know what? I see these men come to me and go, I go, brother, how old are you? Oh, I'm 32. I go, have you been married before? He says, no. Now, obviously, I have to assume the best. But in my head, I'm thinking, how the hell as a 31-year-old man, what the hell? Like, what are you taking some drugs? No, I want to know. Well, that is, the Umar ibn Khattab said, very simple. If a man is not married, yeah? And, you know, he's, he's not fasting, yeah? There's a few things that's going on, but simple conclusions. Simple, yeah, conclusions. Yeah, simple conclusions. Yeah, let's not go. It's very simple. How are you surviving for 30 years, up to the age of 30, and you're not married? Brother, there's something going on. And most of them I speak, bro, there's always that, yeah, there was a relationship, like three years relationship, uh, et cetera. I remembered my point, I forgot, which was uh, very profound as well, yeah? These men who go around and sleep around, just know my brother. Listen to me carefully, yeah? I've come from a Jahliya. I've seen, I know, my friends. When you go and mess around with these girls, just know that there is another man out there just like you doing it to your sister. I repeat again. Or your when you or your daughter, when you go around and think, yeah, I'm having fun, left, right, center, da, 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 and these women are to blame as well. But just know, my brother, that another man is probably doing just like you. Don't think it's just you. Don't think it's just me. I'm the only one and no. You're doing that, brother, just know there's somebody else probably doing that to your future wife. And when the day comes and you're marrying and you're like, why did that happen? Because she came across a man like you. Mm -hmm. Just know it. So don't cry about it. Don't rip your head. You can bang your head on the wall if you want. I think you should, you know, until you pass out. Um, you could call the ambulance, inshallah. But the point is this. When you violate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's laws and think as if there's no consequences, you know a lot of time people plot as if Allah can't hear them. Yeah, man's gonna have a bit of fun, etc. and I repent. As if, Allah, can you imagine, it's an aqidah issue, bro. Well, like, can you imagine, you are literally plotting against Allah. I'm gonna do, yeah, I'm gonna go sleep around with this dumb red pill movement of 50 women. Do you think Allah doesn't hear you? Allah is closer to you than your juggler vein. Allah knows what's going through your head, you know? And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the, in, in the Quran, there's a specific verse. Allah says, we send them signs. And then we send them signs again. Until they persist, Allah says, we open the doors. It's very scary, bro. 
Allah's basically saying, you know, when you keep persisting, persisting, and persisting, Allah sends you signs and signs and signs, and you carry on. Allah says, we open the doors. Meaning the doors of the haram that you want, Allah opens the doors. You know what Allah says in the uh, end of that verse? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and when they think they've reached their peak and the untouchable, we snatch their soul. Can you imagine in that moment where you're thinking, yeah, I've got the girls and this, that, and you're in a club and the heart stops. And that is how you're going to be resurrected on the Yom Qiyam. So, yeah, any last can words, just, inshallah, we're going we're gonna, to, yes, Can please, I add on to please, that? Sister, please, sister, uh, please. I agree with what you said in the last part, mashallah. But um, I strongly disagree with this notion that a woman will have to bear the consequences of the man's wrongdoings or bad actions, right? This is not an Islamic, uh, uh, you know, this, this, this is not based on the teachings of Islam. This is merely coming from culture. This idea that if your brother goes around being a degenerate, right? One day you, you yourself will face a degenerate when you haven't done nothing, right? Sure. So we know that this does not derive from Islamic ideology. This is not, yeah. this, this is not derived from mm -hmm. Islamic teachings, right? Um, but it comes from toxic culture. This idea that a man can never be held accountable. No matter what he does, he will never bear the consequences of his bad doings, of his bad actions and his wrongdoings. And that the female relatives will always, always have to pay for his wrongdoings. And that is something I disagree with strongly. I just want to clarify, if it came across like that, I was not saying that, sister. Yeah. I'm not saying that, for example, if you do it, that it's going to, there's nowhere in the Quran and Sunnah that I know that says that if you do A, it will come, actually in the Quran, or if it says that nobody bears the sin of someone else. Of course, yes. So I'm sorry if it came across like that. Absolutely. What I meant is when someone has a, if somebody's doing certain action, there's ripple effects on society, there's corruption. You know, Allah says there's corruption spread in the land. So I don't mean it in a way where if you do this, therefore it will happen to your uh, um, sister or daughter, etc. What I'm saying is that if, you're, if you as a man are going and sleeping around, you just know there are other men like you. And imagine there are 10,000 men like you. That means there are, and if every one of them does that to five women, Oh, Matt is right. I think that's 50,000. Do you get what I'm saying? He's talking about the consequences. So forgive me if it came but across. You're 100% right. Yeah, to finish off my point. Um, uh, I also wanted to quickly say that I think it's important to... Um, th everything starts off from childhood, like I said earlier, right? It's extremely important to raise young boys and young girls in a similar manner, right? We understand that, there, of course, there are biological differences. There are differences that we can, of course, you know, we cannot deny, right? But it's important to, the same way you're raising your child, your daughter, to treat her body sacred, to look at, to respect herself, to honor herself, right? You know, the importance of being gentle, the importance of being kind, loving, caring, nurturing. It's also just as important to teach your, your sons these same qualities, because these are the qualities that we need as a society. This idea that is only a woman that could, you know that, that is expected to be the nurturer because she's inherently supposed, apparently born with this. No, it's it's a lie. So everything comes down to socialization. I think you know everything comes down to you know um, purity culture is all, plays a massive part as well, right? This idea that you know a, a woman should respect herself, but a man can do as he pleases, like we touched on earlier. So you know it's important to teach this the same the same the same way that you're raising your little girls is just as important to raise your young boys as well. Exactly. I, I would like to emphasize what uh, the brother Ali said. Uh, I think it was more um, uh, an advice than uh, saying yeah, that yeah. there is some karma, there is no karma in Islam. And uh, I, I, would, I remember uh, one uh, story of uh, a young Sahabi, who was very young and went to the Prophet and uh, tried to negotiate uh, Zina, literally, yeah, but Rasulullah, is it that possible? And to see, subhanAllah, the, the methodology and the education uh, that the Prophet sallallahu uh, uh, put in place, he told him, do you will agree on the Zina for your, your mom? This is uh, uh, something that resonates with boys. And when you, t you tell them, when you mess with someone else, uh, uh, sister or, or daughter, someone would do the same, it have an impact. Even though there is no rule that if you do it, it, it will happen. But uh, it's a good mm -hmm. advice, I think. Mm -hmm. and, and it's maybe that uh, you wanted to say? Perhaps, or, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 no. Hold on. I think we've said a lot about how to raise our children, but we haven't spoken about actually setting the example. Mm -hmm. So I think it starts from home. I've seen so many dads who are like imams and they have the hardest time to love the gays. And then you've got their teenage sons watching them and their teenage daughters also seeing it. So it's like, it, you need to start from home. Be the example that you want your children to become. Like my son's seven years old and I've got him, we, we have talks about how a woman should dress and what is modest and what it isn't because I know these are the years where he's going to be exposed to 
so much, you know, corrupt. So it's like I'm doing my best as a single parent to do that. Obviously, a father has a different impact, but mothers need to do the same when it comes to the son. Like be the woman that you would want your son to marry. Be the father that you would want your son to grow up to become. I agree. Um, I think whatever you teach your kids is likely to be the person they're going to end up with for the rest of their life. You are what you attract. Um, so yeah, I'd say it's definitely important to to know what you're teaching your children because whatever they whatever they give off in life is usually what they're going to attract. So yeah. Any last words, anyone? No. I think that's it. Yeah. <laughs> okay so I think that's it we'll wrap it up brothers and sisters inshallah I hope you guys have benefited from this and yeah share it if there's new parents who have got kids etc uh, I think it's very important for us to emphasize uh, that it's not just our daughters that have that responsibility modesty is not just clothing uh, it's the way you speak the way you conduct yourself um, and you know look if you think about it there's a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him where he was sitting down and his, uh, his, his shin was showing and he covered it when Uthman radiallahu anh, walked in and he said that the, uh, the, even the angels, like, you know, they, they are modest or something like that. I can't oh, remember. Shy of, shy of him. Yeah. So, you know, subhanAllah. And he was someone that he would, even when he's like, having a shower, he would cover himself because he knew Allah subhanAllah. Do you get it? That is the level of modesty he had. So this is a man. Yeah. This is a man. How it's many? Yeah, 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 Uthman, yeah. Yeah. Uthman, yeah. How many of us are like that? How many of us, when it comes to modesty, we even mention that hadith, that narration or how he was? This is how he was, and this is what we aspire to be, not the, the, the degenerate uh, red pill. Yeah, I don't want to get into detail. These, these individuals who are absolute hypocrites. Yeah, some of them are Muslims. Absolutely, it, it makes me sick. But the point is that it's very simple. Our role models are not these ind individuals who are corrupt individuals who have double standards and hypocrisy. We follow Islam, we follow the best of uh, mankind who walked this earth, which was the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, yes. and his companions. So please, please, brothers, understand that. And I emphasize just because a woman doesn't respect herself doesn't mean you disrespect her. You be the better person. I know, well, I, believe me. I know of stories where brothers have been the better person and wallahi, wallahi, I'm telling you, I've, I've, I've heard this, where the sister would message and say, you know what? You know, I was in a bad place. You knew better. Thank you. Like I, I was in a bad place. You, wallahi, it can change somebody. And it's like, it's as simple as that, inshallah. Um, yeah, till next time from the bitter truth. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah bless you guys, inshallah, for watching. Goodbye. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever builds a masjid for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will build for him a similar house in Jannah. On that day where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that our books will be given and every little atom weight of good deed you've done will be there. And imagine you see a mountain and you're like, what a lucky person. Which righteous person? And Allah says, this is for you. For me? Yes. What did I do? You allowed people to pray. You built a masjid. I never had the money to build a masjid, oh Allah. You helped, you gave towards it, and Allah gives you the reward of as if you've built it. Donate now, guys, and do not delay. And share the video for extra rewards.